Hey guys, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. I'm Nick Popov and today we're going to be covering bobber dogging from the bank. Uh, the different scenarios you can fish it in, the setup, the rod, the reel. Stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. Alright guys, so we're going to start out with the rod and the reel setup. There's many different rods and reels you can use for this application. Um, in this scenario, I'm going to be using a bait casting rod and a bait casting reel. This is an Okuma 10 foot X series rod. Uh, two things that are really important when bobber dogging from the bank. Number one, the rod. You wanna have a long rod. So anywhere, the, uh, an ideal rod would range from nine, nine, all the way up in some scenarios in big rivers to 12, 13 feet people use. So there's no specific rod I prefer the Okuma series myself, but you can use any rod that you like. Next, you don't want a super flimsy rod. You don't want a noodle rod because a lot of these scenarios are gonna be caught, you're gonna be casting way out into the water and trying to keep as much water, line off the water as possible. So having a long rod and a not super limber rod is, is the two most important factors. Next, I use a braided line. This is the XTC V8. I use a 50 pound. You can use 30 pound, 40 pound, 50 pound. I wouldn't go much above 50 pound because then you get into a little bit of he too heavy a line for the application. So that's the rod and the reel setup. Next, let's move on to the setup. All right, now for the setup, guys. Um, I'm gonna show you what I would use and uh, uh, the different, there's many different applications as well of what you can put underneath the bobber dogging setup. I'll show you what my preference is. But this is the setup from start to finish. So, and remember, this is my preference. So starting out, I like to run two bobber stops. Um, if I'm running the braided bobber stops like this, I like to run two of them. It's always good to have a backup on there. So all you're doing is sliding it off of that piece of plastic, not throwing your piece of plastic on the ground, taking it home with you. And you're just taking the ends of that bobber stop and pulling each end nice and tight. I like to pull them real tight because you want that thing not to move, okay? This is gonna be your gauge on how deep you fish. And this is gonna be very important in this scenario. Next, I'll put on my second stop. Pull that nice and tight. So now, some people may think this is overkill, but if you fish enough doing this, you're making a lot of casts and this bobber stop is going through the eyes a lot of times. So it puts wear on that bobber stop and over time they will fail. And the trouble with this is, is if it fails, now you gotta cut your whole setup off just to slide another bobber stop on. And you, or you could tie a mono one on, but they're, they're a pain to go through the guide. So after I've got that on, I'm gonna clip my tag ends with my Gerber scissors here. I just leave a little, about a half inch tag end. Then I'll slide my next one up. Just like so. And then I will cut that leaving about a half inch tag end as well. All right, so now, as you can see, I have two stops on there, just like that. Now, I'm gonna slide those two stops together and move them up and down my line. Next is going to be the bobber stop bead. So this bead is going to, it's gotta, you gotta make sure it has a very small hole and it'll slide up onto that bobber stop. Oh, we got a special guest. I don't know if I'd listen to this guy's guys. He doesn't really know what he's talking about. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Watch the last video. <laughs> so next we're gonna put on this bobber stop bead. It's really imperative that has a nice small hole. There's beads made specifically for bobber stops. The idea of this is that when it hits the water and the weight goes down, it's gonna pull tight against those stops that we put on there causing it to stop in one place. So you can select your depth. Next, I like to, now this is not a necessity, but this is what I do and I'll explain why here in just a second. I put a corky on next. Uh, this corky is going to act as kind of like an insurance policy for your casting. A lot of times we're using extremely long leaders, you know, six, seven foot leaders on our bobber, on our bobber dogging setups and you're casting that and this this corky right here is gonna be like an insurance policy because if it's casted properly and your gear goes into the water properly, it's gonna slide up and hold perfectly in place like that. 
Now, if it's casted and it gets tangled up, it's gonna lay on the water all goofy like that, and it won't be fishing properly. So it's kind of an insurance policy that you know you don't make a long cast, you gotta reel in and recast after you've made a long, beautiful drift through the perfect spot. Now you gotta reel in and find out you're tangled. So this is, this is really important to me. Next, I will go with my bobber, <clears throat> my bobber dogging bobber. Now, this is another thing that's just like the rods. There's a wide range of bobbers. Um, there's, there's anything from small little floats cut in half to a larger bobber dogging style specific for this method of fishing. Um, I prefer myself a heavy, or a bigger float. I like to go up in weight. Um, a lot of guys use really small weight. I like to use a little heavier weight. So I'll go all the way up to two thirds ounce sometimes when I'm bobber dogging from the bank specifically. So next we're gonna slide our float on. There we go. All right, so we got our bobber threaded on now. Now, a lot of guys will tie a bumper onto this, a mono bumper. Today in these conditions, we got higher water, a little bit of color to the water. It's actually ideal steelhead conditions today. So I am going to tie directly to my braid. I don't feel like my line is gonna, you know, be a detractant to, a detractant to the fish. So I am gonna run straight to my braid. You can put a mono, mono bumper onto this. I prefer not to. I usually run mine directly to the braid. Also, if you get snagged up, you're usually gonna get your bobber and your setup back. So if you don't have a huge surplus of bobbers, I highly recommend tying straight to your braid. This is a pretty important part and there are different ways to do this, but this swivel is a three-way swivel. So you got your snap in the middle, your main line, your leader. Um, this is important in the bobber dogging setup because it's gonna get your weight down and I'll show you once the full setup's tied. But I just typically tie a Palomar knot. So just overhand, then take it back through just like that. And I was a little excessive on my tag end, but that's what these Gerber scissors are made for. Snip that off. Now, another little trick you can do is if you were fishing a river with a little lower clear water and you're tying directly to your swivel, you can just take permanent marker or, or dye or whatever you'd like and black out your line to give you a little more stealthy, uh, little more stealth to your setup. Now next we're gonna go down to the business end. Uh, today we're gonna be fishing a Yarny and a bead. Uh, I will say that when you're bobber dogging from the bank, a lot of times you have trees and uh, you know rocks and things in your back cast. So you, it, you gotta kinda use the application for, for your area. If you have a really wooded area or stuff behind you, you probably wanna go with a single setup, not a double. So, but I'm gonna show you the double setup today. So then we're just gonna tie it, just typical fisherman's knot here. Don't forget to wet that if you're using fluoro. Okay, now next, this is our little bead dropper here. Um, there's some tutorials and stuff on how to tie uh, the knot that I'm gonna use. I'm tying what's called a Duncan loop um, and it's gonna attach directly to this. You can just tie a standard fisherman's knot right to the shank of this hook if you'd like but I like to use this little knot because it's easy to swap out my, it's easy to swap out my beads and stuff if I'm running a hard bead. So, and then all it does is the loop, is just this little loop that creates in the line. You just take it, you slide it right over your top offering, your yarny here, and you just pull that nice and tight. And now it's secured down. The cool thing about this, this particular knot is if you want to get this knot off and change out your bead, it's super fast. You can just back the knot off like that, pull it off, and just restart the process and put on a different color bead, slide it right back on, and you're back in business. All right, so we pretty much got the whole setup tied. We got our, our bead dropper, our yarny, to our three-way swivel, to our, our bead just to protect our knot, our bobber, our corky, our bobber stop bead, and then our bobber stops. Now, the last thing you need is some sort of weight, okay? There's tons of different applications you can use. I use the Dave's Tango Free Weight. 
comes in all different sizes. They got little little uh, steel head packs like this that come with a, a plethora of different sizes, thirds ounce, half ounce, so on and so forth. I like anywhere from, when I'm bobber dogging from the bank, I like a little heavier lead. Um, it's gonna allow me to fish it a little slower, pick apart the area, and you're not moving with your bobber. So it's really important that you're able to control your float, which we'll get into here in just a second when we start making some casts. So I'm gonna start out with a half ounce float because we have this nice little tail out here that we're gonna fish. So we'll clip our half ounce float on here, or half ounce weight. And then this is what the setup looks like. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about where to fish this setup, okay? This is one of the most commonly asked questions I get. Can you bobber dog from the bank? And the question is yes, and we're answering that today. And I'm gonna show you the type of water to fish it in. Um, you gotta remember with a bobber dogging setup, it's not like a vertical float, okay? You always want it moving. You want that point, bobber pointed downstream. The idea is that your weight hits the bottom, your bobber points downstream at an angle like this and just kind of chugs your gear downstream, okay? So it's really important that you kind of figure out what depth it is and then you set your bobber stop to whatever depth you think it is and then about a foot deeper, okay? So if I'm fishing a six foot run, I'm probably gonna have my bobber stop set at about seven feet. The reason for that is I want that weight kind of dragging it down the river. I want that weight acting like a dog pulling, you know, its owner down the river. I mean, a down the walk when a dog's walking. Um, that's kind of like the, the analogy I like to use is you want that bobber working for you, dragging your gear down the river. So the, idea, the, the ideal river conditions, you want it moving, you want walking paced water, Sometimes it can be a little slower and sometimes it can be a little faster. The great thing about this is it's a super versatile setup. You can fish it in a little bit faster water or my favorite type of water would be something like this. You know, walking speed water. You got a few boulders out there, but mostly smaller gravel uh, and not a lot of snags. The idea is this floats down river, your bead rolls along the gravel where those fish are laying and staging and it presents it to them semi-naturally. So. Uh, I'm gonna kind of show you kind of where I would start to fish this. For me, I like to start my casts in close and then work my way out. So if I have a certain section of river that I'm gonna fish, I'm gonna make a short cast first and then I'm gonna to try to just kind of work my way down. I'll make five or 10 casts, you know, covering that spectrum of water and then I'll step 10 to 15 feet down the river and make those same casts again. The idea of that is you're presenting it to those fish that are laying in there from a different angle every time. When you, if you were to just stand in one spot all day, would you catch a fish? Probably. But even in the boat when I'm doing this, I notice that if I move my boat and I reposition it into a hole 10 feet down or 20 feet down, that we almost instantly hook fish. And I think it's because it's just coming at those fish at a different angle and it's giving them a different look every time versus sitting in one spot and making the same cast over and over and over and over. It gets repetitive. So start close, work your way out. I'm gonna kind of show you guys where I'm gonna, how I'm gonna fish this run here. I think it's probably about five feet deep, five and a half feet deep. So I'm gonna set my bobber stop to about six feet to start. And that's six feet above my weight, okay? The idea is you want to make sure that you're deeper than the water you're fishing. So I've got my bobber stop set to the depth that I want. Now I'm gonna make a cast on the inside here, on the inside of the run. And I'm just gonna let that presentation get down to the bottom. And you will know that your gear is fishing right when you're bobber dogging from the bank, when your bobber is pointed downstream. If your bobber dogging float is pointed vertically, then you know that you're not deep enough because that weight is holding your bobber down, making your bobber sit straight up and down. When you know you're the right depth, you your bobber dogging float will be pointed downstream. All right, guys. So another very very important thing when you're bobber dogging from the bank is line management. I always say that controlling your line is the difference between you catching a fish when your bobber goes under and you not catching a fish. If you got too much line on the water, you're going to struggle to get the hook set in that fish. These fish are grabbing these beads and spitting them out as fast as they grab them. So managing your line as it's moving down current, you don't want too much line on the water and you don't want to be straight to your bobber. I always tell people, envision a candy cane shape behind your bobber. So coming from your bobber in the direction of a candy cane back to your rod. 
that's how you want it. That's the amount of line you want to have on the water. And you want to just free float that bobber with no stress, allow it to move down river without impeding it all the time and let it run just straight down the seam that you're trying to fish. So I'm going to show you guys here kind of how I do that. All right, here we go. All right, so I've cast it out. I, I'm controlling the line with my thumb here. And now my, you can tell your gear's down because you can see that bobber pointing down river now. So now I have that small amount of line on the water. And every time that I get a bunch of line on the water, I'm just gonna do a small mend, okay? Keeping a very small candy cane shape in front of my bobber. That way, if my bobber was to go down right now, I can stop the reel, reel till I feel tension and set the hook. That is gonna be the key to your success. If you have a huge belly in your line, you're never gonna hook these fish because they're grabbing it and letting it go as fast as you can, as fast as you can have a reaction to it. They've already bit that thing, found out it's not real, and they're trying to get rid of it. So it's real important that you don't have too much line. As you can see, I'm just mending my line nicely, keeping a nice little candy cane shape right in front of my bobber and allowing that bobber to move downriver unimpeded. That is the most important part. If, if you're always pulling back on your bobber and moving your bobber, every time you do that, it looks unnatural. That's why bobber dogging from a boat is so effective, is because you can just cast out and move downstream with the speed of your bobbers and never have to even really let line out or mend your rod or anything. So that's why bobber dogging is so successful from a boat. But that being said, it can be every bit as successful from the bank. I do it everywhere I fish. This is my main technique. So don't be afraid to get out there and try it for yourself. All right, guys, there you have it. Bobber dogging from the bank. It is possible and it's very effective. Make sure you guys follow along. We got lots more tutorials coming out. If you haven't already, go down here and subscribe and hit the bell notification. It really helps us out. And lets us bring more of these tutorials to you. And I'll see you guys on the water.